Machine Repeat here, folks. In part three of my video interview with 97-year-old deer dealer Joe Colgan of Wyoming, Illinois, we're joined by Joe's son, Tim Colgan. Tim recently retired after a long career in the farm equipment business with John Deere. Also joining us are Tim's son, Andy, who farms in the Wyoming, Illinois area, and Magella Colgan, Joe's wife of 70 years. Joe and Magella share with us their secrets to raising 12 kids. Okay, Joe, show me what, what do we got a picture of here now. This customer was buying this churro picker from me. Okay. He had an old one. Yep. And I told him that I'd give him $1,000 for his old one as a trade-in. Okay. He said, Joe, it's not worth that much. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the, what's the customer's name, Joe? That only happened once. That was Mr. Wirtz. Mr. Wirtz. Chris Wirtz, yeah. Chris Wirtz. Yeah, he was my customer. He was a loyal customer. Yeah, that, that's a kind of customer conversation you would remember as a dealer. Isn't it? My trade-in isn't worth that. He was that. a good one. That's yeah. awesome. Well, he had been a, maybe my just about my first customer as a dealer. I got an allotment of two seven-foot power mowers. Okay. And I went to Chris and I said, "Do you need a mower?" He said, "Yes, I do." And I said, "Well, I got a mower." This was your and first sale. I think it might have been one of my very first sales. John Deere mower okay. as a dealer. Okay. And I, I sold know. Chris a, a mower, and he never forgot that. Wow. Our last uh, tractor we sold was a 4450. Okay. Over to Tulon, and we just saw the gentleman the other day that uh, bought the 4450 over there. Uh, Harley Rediger, Rediger. Okay. the Rediger family, and they oh. still got it, and it, so they're proud of that. Does he have a relation in the auction business, Rediger? Rick yes, Rediger? that would be a nephew. Nephew, Rick. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes. I know Rick real well, great auctioneer, yeah. yeah. Their dads were, uh, this fellow and his father were brothers. So but that was the last tractor when the you were The last in tractor that came out of Colgan County. Okay, a 4450. Huh? 4450, two-wheel drive. Awesome. Probably worth as much now as when you sold it. Huh? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. All right, Joe. You got all kinds of good pictures here, Joe. What else you got to show us? Well, that's one of our auctions. One this of your would auctions. Have been, uh, okay. This was in 1953. That we we had annual auctions because okay. we didn't have many jockeys at that time. Right. And so here's a 12A combine, and here's a couple of uh, I think those are Alice. With five foot cutter bars on them, wow. uh, and five bottom, four bottom plows. Looks like you had a good crowd there, Tim. You had a good crowd, yeah. Good. Mr. Beanie was the auctioneer at that time. He was from Wyoming. Yes. Okay. So he did all the farm auctions. Wow. I love, I love seeing those old auction photos. Those are great. It probably was this same day, as the sale started. Yep. A Ford rear cultivator was worth one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Okay. And he was trying to get the auction started, and he had about $75, and he said, sold. Yep. I looked at him, and he said, we'll get that back. <laughs> he said, Everybody got their said attention. The boys, yes. We're going to have an auction here now. Yes. A good, you never bid, and he a, did. He had a good auction. A good strategy. It was a good good day. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So you guys would have an annual auction? Uh, did you do that for how long did you keep that going? We'd have one about once a year. Yeah. Uh, up into the early 60s. Well, we had them right up to the end. We'd have an occasional yeah, auction. Occasional. They got less and less. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we'd have them. And, uh, Tell them about the horses, Dad, when you were trading those in. The last about 1937. Your buyer of the horses. Oh, we were trading in horses. And, of course, we'd have horses on the auction. You would take horses in on trade. Yeah. I had traded that. So how do you value a, a used horse, Joe? How do you value a used horse? Do you remember? I wasn't very good at it, but I would take them <laughs> at 100 or 125 dollars. Okay, Mr. Riddell. I sold a fellow a spreader. Yeah. And I let him trade me five horses. Okay. And we had a horse buyer who was good. Okay. And he looked at these horses. And there wasn't a sound one in the bunch. <laughs> Glue factory. I huh? didn't make any money on that. Oh, okay. It's kind of like uh, his, trading for a 4020 with the clutch out of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or the torque not working. Oh man. This, trading uh, horses. Wow. At that time, we had a farmer uh, who he would buy our horses. Okay. And just last week, I talked to his grandson. Really. And he remembers the granddad buying horses. So he was a horse jockey. 
Well, yes. Kind of, so to speak. That's what he was. A different kind of I guy. said, who did he sell to? Well, he said in the community, just to sure. farmers. Right. But he said he would always hitch a horse and try it okay. before he resold it. Wow. And so he was good. So the last horse you took in on trade was roughly, when would you guess, Joe? Didn't we guess that to be well, about 37? By the time I got into business, I don't think we were taking any horses. Okay. 47. So that was 30, when you were... 37. 37. Okay. Okay. When I left, we were still trading in horses in 37, right. but not much more. Right. So that was when you were you were traveling, uh, traveling for deer. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. What do you remember about those early days when you were traveling for deer, calling on deer dealers, Joe? Well... I, imagine I got to see a lot of dealers, right? And as you know from your experience, there was a full range of dealers. Uh -huh. Who were some of your favorites that you visited? I had good dealers. I had one where Tim, the preceder, was over there in Lakin. Okay. And he was a good dealer. In Belsley. Name. What was his name? Belsley. Belsley. Okay. And one a dealer that I called on as a traveler. Yep. Who became outstanding as a dealer was his, the dad was Sam Martin in Roanoke. Oh, Martin. Okay. The boy was Louis Martin. Yep. They were on the farm. They had the parts in the hen house. Okay. And they had a two car garage for a shop. <laughs> and Louis was Louis was nineteen, and his mother said, "Take him to the country and teach him to sell." Okay. So I took him to the country. But I always told him afterwards, by noon, all I was doing was driving the car. <laughs> he became an outstanding dealer. Dealers he was so going. smart, so good. He connected with the customer. Yes. Like, for instance, one yeah. thing he did, when the multiple solar, four and six solar came, yep. he bought all the two solar tractors that deer would sell him. Okay. I don't know how many he got, but he got a lot of them. Yep. And he just put them in the shed. Ah. And it, from there on, he sold two cylinder tractors at a good profit. So he was ahead they of his. Available any place else? He was kind of ahead of his time there a little bit, yeah. yeah. Louis was a brilliant man, huh. and his dealership is still there. Wow. Actually, it's his granddaughter, uh, I guess now that is hmm. one of the powers. Okay. And how many dealers were you calling on back then, Joe? Well, we would be in a in single territory, be about eight or ten. Eight or ten. But okay. as it happened, I'd, I'd be transferred from one territory to the other temporarily for okay. various occasions. So I got to travel clear down below Springfield, east of Champaign, okay. west, clear over to the Iowa line. I called on a lot of different Now, that must have been in the late 30s. I mean, th times were tough. Um, and you would go call on the dealers. Um, gosh, that must have been... You had a lot of COD parts then? You had to pay the parts at the post office? Well, yeah, that was when I was working my original job when yeah. I was a parts man. Okay. My dealer didn't have any money. He was broke. Right. If he ordered a special part for somebody, it would come in COD to the post office. Okay. And there were days when the farmer would come in with his money. Yep. And we'd take his money and go to the post office and pay the COD and bring his part back. Get the part, huh? <laughs> uh, just what you had to do. Yeah. To go back to when I traveled, one particular instance, I got acquainted with the dealer in Dwight. Okay. He was about my age. Okay. And that would be just when we got married, 39, 40. Sure. I was a friend of his. We were very close friends. Until he was 100 years old. He, he finally died when old. he was 100 years old. Wow. But we'd been friends forever. Wow. He was, he, John Station, he was a very good man. And he was in Dwight. That was yes. interesting. Okay. And I had other dealers that I kept their friendship, you know. Right. Uh, as we were saying, the different kinds. I remember down south of Peoria, who, who pulled? No, I wouldn't who pulled. Anyway. Jim was a dealer, and he mm -hmm. was a small dealer, yep. and he was his own bookkeeper. On his desk, he'd have files, Okay. and at that time, I sometimes would have to see the invoice Okay. when I'd go to collect. Sure. He'd say, well, let's see, 
Right about here. Oh, so. Well, I imagine just tons of. I, I could tell when I stopped at the gas station here in town, Joe, and I, I told someone I was coming to visit you and Tim, and uh, the two or three people in the gas station, they all said, "Oh, you know," I could tell they loved you. So I'm, I'm sure you've just related really well with people over the years, and a lot of good connections with farmers and well, dealers. Well, actually, uh, every day I like to go to work. I mean, I really did like it. And we've been in town here, and as you know, by this time, our family was 12. 12 kids. Seven boys and five girls. And Tim, where were you in the... I'm fourth from the top. Fourth from the top, okay. Yes. He's my second boy. Okay. That two girls and then two boys, and Pat's the second boy. And our extended family now, married and children, great-grandchildren, right. grandchildren, great-grandchildren, our extended family is about 85. Before you go, I'll show you a picture of all of Wow. <laughs> okay, now, Joe, we need some words of advice here. You and your wife raised 12 kids and, you, and 85 grandkids, great-grandkids. What would you tell people is the, you know, how did you guys do it? What? Well, I, I think that's what made us remember here in town. I mean, because the kids were a good bunch. Mm -hmm. We weren't very tough on them. Mm -hmm. They ran around and played, you know. They could go, and when they hear the noon whistle, they knew it was time to come home and eat. Sure. And uh, they had lots of friends, and, and they, were, they were good. And uh, that is nice. We've been in this house 50 years. I was going to ask, yeah, this is a beautiful yeah. place right here on the corner. It was in 57. This house was for sale, luckily, very cheap. Okay. And no one else had a family as big as us. <laughs> so we bought uh, it. And we've this, had this dinner table has seen some conversations. Huh? This wow. is a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood, which we put on top of our breakfast table legs. Awesome. And this is, we had two benches on each side of it, and then we could get the whole family at this table. Wow. When we moved in this house, this was the dining room. Okay. We converted this room to a kitchen. It's beautiful. And my wife designed that island in the middle. They were new at that time. Okay. And it gave us a place to have our dining room table and our kitchen. So she designed it, huh? Well, it was her oh, thought. Pretty cool. She said, I'm not going to have a sink at a wall. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going Cooking be, for 12 kids, that I'm must have be been... face uh, the window. That must have been interesting. Tim, what and, was your favorite meal growing up? Uh, meatloaf. meatloaf. That went a long way. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. But I awesome. wish we'd have kept all the toys we played with. Uh, oh, no we played kidding. in the dirt, my brothers and I. Okay. And now they're collector items, you know. Yeah. We wore them out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you ask about how to raise them. And we have always thought we didn't give them very much advice. We did send them to school and send them to church and, and behave themselves and keep clean and right. some simple things. But they... Got ready. They all went to college. We took 12 kids to college, wow. and we went to 12 graduations. Wow. And That's ahead of its time, too. Tim was one yeah. of them. Vietnam wow. interrupted him. Yeah. Tim. <laughs> but he came back and finished, and yeah. uh, they all graduated. Well, They went to more than 12 different universities. I don't know how many. Sure, sure. And... Several got master's degrees, and one got a doctor's degree. Wow. And uh, we still have a very close family. Hmm. We had about 75 here in this house for Christmas. Really? Wow. Our wow. family is very close. Are most of them still around? And, and we think that the large group, so many good people, yeah. the younger ones learn... They're, they're a very good bunch. Now we're spread out all over. Uh, okay. Seattle, Boise, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Carolinas, wow. out east. Uh, there's five of us around here. Okay. The, the now, 12. Okay, now I have a question for Andy. Okay. Andy is Tim's son, uh, Joe's grandson. Now, Andy, what do you remember about... Uh, or just tell us your thoughts about Grandpa Joe here. <laughs> Uh, 
must have learned a lot from him about uh, dealing with people and farming and life in general. Yeah, and of course I'm going to get all choked up now. Too. <laughs> uh, the one thing I can say, it's just leading by example. Yeah, awesome. It's, and now, Andy, you you are in farming, is that right? Right around right. Wyoming here. Yep. Okay. You got your start in the egg lending business over too long. Yep. Okay. And now you're farming. Uh, is it right in the Wyoming area here? Yeah, we're spread over about 35 miles, uh, okay. based out of okay. Camp Grove, Wyoming area. Okay. So. so when you have questions, you Andy is farming our acreage. Right. Tim okay. farmed it. Now Andy's farming it. Well, that's awesome. Good deal. And we have oh, we have mom back here. <laughs> Come ahead, mom. Yep. Have a seat. Now they come over by Tim. Let uh, her come this way, Andy. It's all right. She, get up, mommy, to see. Get the two of them on the on the picture. Okay, mom. Greg's interviewing you, mom. He's got John on the TV. Mom, twelve kids. You have twelve, 12 kids, kids now. Twelve children. Twelve yes. successful children. Nine girls and uh, seven boys. Okay. What do you remember when all the kids were around the house here together? What, what was that like? I beg your pardon. What was it like when all the kids were here in the house and they were young? Well, it was uh, a, a busy household, that's for sure. But they all helped in, uh, took uh, part in whatever had to be done. And okay. uh, the high school was just a block away. And... Uh, grade school, two, three blocks, so uh, they uh, really took care of themselves as far as going to school, but it, it, it was a busy household, that's right. for sure. <laughs> now, I imagine at this kitchen table here, dinner yes. table, there yes. have been some stories about equipment and machinery over the years. Did you ever get tired of listening to all the tractor stories and talk? <laughs> uh, I myself uh, never had uh, do any heavy part in the business at down the okay. store. Okay. I was just... Uh, uh, too busy here at home. But you put up with all the tractor talk. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. That's uh, awesome. I know my mom, she's had her share of tractor talk at the kitchen table over the decades. But uh, Craig was in the yes. John Deere business, too. I yep. see. The yes. family, yeah. Well, it's, uh, yeah, just fantastic. Uh, what What do you remember about the early days when when, when Joe became a dealer? Uh, what What were those days like? Well. And the kids were young and. Uh, I recall, it. of course, he would be busy at the store, and uh, everything revolved about, like, for the evening meal when he would come home. But we always sure. had uh, our evening meal together. But uh, as far as the store goes, it, uh, uh, John Deere was it. <laughs> John Deere was it. Awesome. Yes. Good stuff. But, uh, well, conversation took uh, place uh, about what was going on with the various people that were their customers. And, right. And uh, we felt we knew them. Yeah, well, that's that's the secret to a good business over the years is knowing your customers and treating them fairly. And and Joe, I I think that's uh, and Tim. Thank you very I much. Think that's what you guys have done, and it's been such a treat to visit with you guys. I appreciate you having me to the house here, and uh, yeah, it's been great fun today, Joe. Thanks it's again. Been a real good pleasure to get acquainted with you, with your John Deere background. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I I love talking machinery with people and. I, Fascinating to hear the, the family histories. So, again, thanks much, Joe and Tim. There we go. Um, Thank now you that you're retired, I can talk you into helping me cover some auctions sure. maybe. Sure. Good deal. All right. Well, thanks again.